now is uh, people come to the Dezen Zen Center who is a beginner, and then so we let them, uh, the, the, who is a teacher, let them know so how to practice, it's like a bowing, chanting, sitting, and then take kind of thing, instruct to them. And then also in the who is uh, come to the here, one of the practice, for some calm down their mind. And then, yeah, mind because of the, some mind problem they try to come, and then one of the practice. So when they uh, the person the people go to their home, so how can practice uh, on their own, or how they can practice? People eat every day. <laughs> 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 yeah, because your body needs it. If you want to be happy and uh, learn how to get over your suffering, then practice. We think, you know, we're born and right away this body is, is functioning. And then we, after a year or so, we can begin to use speech and, and think. And we have this idea outside things will give us happiness. You know, food, clothing, uh, uh, shelter, and uh, something to do. But those things, it, you know, it always amazed me. I'm hungry, I eat, I'm not hungry. That's great. Why do I get hungry again a few hours later? That's really a bummer. Yeah, two, three times a day, we, we want to eat something. Why can't we eat once? And that finishes it for the rest of my life. I don't need it anymore. And maybe you guys have beds in your room, but older people, yeah, everybody used to sleep on the floor, right? Maybe you have beds. So when I grew up, I had a bed in my room, a little bed off the ground. And starting around five years old, my mother would make me make the bed in the morning. And after a year or so, I got this big question. I didn't like making my bed. How come I can't just make it once and that's enough forever? It didn't make any sense to me. Maybe I have a weird mind, <laughs> but it was like, why do I have to do this every day? And if it's just gonna get messed up at night, why make it at all? Now I have a very simple style. I make the bed, but at night, I don't get in it. <laughs> I just lay on top of it, and I have a little blanket, and I put that on top. And in the morning, I just fold the blanket, and the bed's fine. I, I can't eat. I, I, I don't think I can eat one meal a day regularly. I, that doesn't work for me. One meal only one meal. You know, Southern mm. Buddhist monks, or nuns, they only eat one meal a day, lunch. Maybe Buddha thought, oh, why eat three times? I'll just eat once. It's simpler. You only wash the bowl once. <laughs> Excuse me, I just spent a month by myself. All I do is get up, say the threefold refuge, the four great vows, do bowing, do some sitting, some yoga, eat a little bit, and go outside and walk around and look at people. I'm amazed. It's like, wow, I bow to everybody who takes care of their lives. I don't know how you do it. It seems so complicated. Different color clothes every day. <laughs> Got to take care of your hair, you know, and sometimes it's here or here. <laughs> and, you know, smell nice. Yeah, I try to smell nice because you're sitting right there. <laughs> I'm uh, 73, and during this month I was thinking, what did I do with my life? And, and uh, I really wasn't sure <laughs> what it was, whether I had any good effect on anybody, even on myself. And then today I was reading uh, some of Buddha's teaching, and I remembered I'm doing exactly what I wanted to do. Buddha only taught two things, the cause of suffering and the end of suffering. Everybody wants to get over suffering. Yeah. But, Every creature wants to be happy, doesn't want to suffer. A lot of people have dogs. Maybe some of you have dogs, usually little ones. In so Korea. I'm they just want to be happy and not suffer. The same as us. I saw a guy yesterday, I think he had a young jindoge, very cute. And the man bought something, it looked like kind of a hot dog on a stick. And 
he gave a little bit to the dog. And then when he took a bite, the dog barked at him. So then he gave a little more to the dog, and then he took another bite, the dog barked at him again. <laughs> the point is, you know, going back to your question, <laughs> Buddha said if you want to get over your suffering, you have to look inside what practicing is. Looking back at myself, what is this thing I call I? You know, you know we say, that's me. That's me. That's me. You know, but that's not me. This is my cup, this is my robe, this is my bead, my watch, my hand, my head, not me. Things, these are the things I use. So the body is just the thing I use, it's not me. I remember July 1977, wow. I was sitting a seven day retreat in America. I was a lay person. Sung San Sanim, our teacher, had suddenly got a heart problem serious heart problem. He was 50 years old and everybody was scared. We thought he might die. And I was thinking, I just met my teacher four months ago and now he's going to die. And I remember before he went to the hospital, he came down and gave us a talk. And he said, I don't have a problem. You have a problem. If you're attached to your teacher, you have a problem. This body is just a rented car. We rent it from the universe. We use it, and then someday we return it to the universe, and then we pay the bill. If we use it well, then not so much bill. If we don't use it well, then there may be a big bill. Yeah. Anyway, one day we return it to the universe, then we get a new car. Maybe this life you got a Tico, or the, what's the little car now? Morning, yeah. the little one. Yeah, if you're good to a lot of people, maybe next life you get a Benz so, or a BMW. <laughs> what Sung San Sanim said that time is, doesn't matter what the car is, who's the driver? So why do we do bowing, chanting, sitting? Because they're very simple activities. When you go to work, you want to do a good job, so you advance or get more money. You have some goal beyond just do the job. When, you know, it's complicated because you have a lot of desires. When you buy clothes, you don't just cover your body, you want it to like look good. So everything we do gets complicated. But when you're bowing, what's the point? Just go down and come up. You're not going to get paid. You're not going to get, uh, uh, you know, meet a partner while you're bowing. You're not going to become famous, but you can experience something about yourself. We do 108 bows first thing every morning in the Zen centers and in the temple. Uh, the head monk usually will say right before the last bow, last bow, then everybody knows. When I was a new student, I would try to count every bow. In six months, I was correct twice. At five in the morning, I couldn't count to 108. That, that taught me something about my mind. When we're sitting, all we have to do is sit, breathe in, breathe out, and maybe you do a mantra or something. Anything else is extra, not necessary. But everybody can experience many thoughts coming and going. That's all called karma, mind habit. Uh, we had a teaching that you, you sent out a few days ago from Sung San Sanin. Uh, it said, if your mind is empty, other people's mind is reflected in your mind. If your mind is not empty, you only see your own mind. That happens nonstop every day in every relationship we have. So practicing means, whether bowing, sitting, and chanting, just do it. But most of the time, we do something more. We think. If you see your thinking, it starts to have less and less power over you if you don't hold it. And it will go down over time. And then situations, people will be reflected in your mind clearly, not tainted by your own ideas. Then you, that's liberation. Then you can become free. Because suffering comes from our thinking. 
왜냐하면 왜냐하면 Everything was destroyed. <laughs> you know? So economic practice doesn't take away the basic suffering of life. So now I realize the only thing I was concerned about when I was young was why are we suffering? How take it away? So I guess I did do that. So a little bit, you recognize either I'm suffering. Oh my God, life, it's like, it's not bad. It just has suffering in it. Like, no matter what. Rich people suffer, poor people suffer. Famous people suffer, nobody knows you, suffer. Cool. These outside things, don't take it away. Yeah. In Korea, we got good lessons from that when all these talents and K-pop people used to kill themselves. They were successful. So just remember, there is suffering. How can it become clear? Go. First step is start to learn how to calm down. These techniques help us calm down and pay attention now. And the only way to do that at home is do it. Maybe my mother was right, make me make the bed. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you're going to feed yourself, then also do some practice. Make it simple. You know, how do you make a good habit? Just decide, okay, wake up, go to the bathroom, 10 minutes, some kind of practicing. That's all. I do the morning practice, go to the bathroom, go in the other room, do the recitations, bow, do some sitting, longer than 10 minutes for me. But, uh, you know, the first, when you begin that kind of thing, it's sort of, eh, you know, eh, maybe not today or something. But if you make it simple and do it every day, after a few weeks, it's natural, it's simple, and it will help you. And you'll start to see your mind habits automatically. You don't have to be hunting for it. You'll begin to see it. And the moment you see it, it has less control over you, less power over you. That's getting liberated from the causes of my suffering because it comes from my own mind. It's kind of shocking to realize that everything that happens to me has a cause that I created. It's not good, not bad. It's just the way it is. Anytime I blame somebody else, I'm not basing, based in reality. I think it's amazing. Reality is just so much simpler than we think. Yeah, so much simpler. And it's okay. Ah. Exhale. Ah. <laughs> okay, so short answer is go home, just do it. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha